How's it going everyone? When I first started playing role-playing games, I found out very quickly that it can be an expensive hobby. So one of the main materials I use when I create miniatures is plain white cardstock. So I'm going to show you guys how to turn something like this into something like this. Now there's a couple great options when you're talking about uh, cheap minifigures. Um, one of the primary ones is these paper cutouts that you just glue to a base or fit to a base and put on the battlefield. Um, the one problem that I have with uh, figures like this is depending on where you're sitting at the table, they can kind of just disappear on you. Um, and it can be kind of hard to keep track sometimes of where certain minifigures are or what they are sometimes without having to shift around and uh, peek at the battle map and try to figure out where they are. I've also seen several people use flat tokens, something similar to this, with a coloring on it or a minifigure on it. And those work really well too, and they're great budget options. But my preferred tactic is to create minifigures like this out of paper, bend them and pose them and stick them on a base and have them on the battlefield. In my opinion, it's a great budget option as well as very, very unique in design and it just shows up really well on the battlefield. You can kind of see it no matter which way it's turned. You still get the idea across of where the character is, but it hardly costs anything, just a little time and patience to make. So without further ado, let's show you guys how to make something like this. The material list is pretty straightforward. Uh, we need your white cardstock, gray acrylic paint, paintbrush, tacky glue, a sharp and precise pair of scissors, an eraser, a one inch diameter coin, wooden coin that you can get at most craft stores, some crafting tweezers, a uh, fine tip mechanical pencil, and a extra fine black pen, colored pencils, or colored markers. So we're starting with a Barbarian, and here I have a little stencil I cut out of cardstock that just kind of helps keep all my characters uniform. Once we're done with that, we can sketch our character in. This can be really simple, or as detailed as you want it to be. It gives you a nice basic outline for when you're inking later. Once we're done sketching, we come over our detail with a fine tip black pen. It'll just help the details really jump out. And there's going to be a lot of intricate detail on the face and a lot of the other parts of the uh, character. So having the finest tip of a pen you can find is highly recommended. Lots of detail here, adding in the hair, the facial features. And then later on, you'll see that I have added some bits of like fur and spots to the leather and armor on this guy. It's important to note, too, that... Parts of the character can look a little chunky, but that is easily um, fixed later once you start cutting the character out. You can trim things down a little bit if you need to. And here we're going to erase the pencil out from underneath the ink. And we are ready to color this guy in. Putting some uh, black brush pen in there along with some skin tone of the colored pencils. The colored pencils really uh, bring the skin tone out and it's not as full and thick as the ink is. You can add the hair details and some of the clothes with this light brown color. And we're just going to keep adding different colors to this character. The wonderful thing about using pens is they give a really nice, uh, bright, crisp look to your characters. Adding a little bit of uh, more colored pencil for fur and lighter areas that aren't uh, don't need to have that full color as much. Adding a little more detail, some more wrinkles and uh, furrowed eyebrows to this character, some muscle detail, just to give it all the little features that really help this character stand out. Now the next tricky part is going to be adding a weapon into this guy's hands. I decided on giving him a claymore to use, so he's going to be wielding this two hands. You're drawing the claymore. It doesn't matter if you get a straight line here or not. Once you get the scissors out, you can straighten any crooked edges that you might have put on the sword. Just going to fill it in a little bit. Color it in with some light gray or silver marker. And now we're ready to cut this guy out. 
Just carefully trimming around all the details of this character. Some of these areas can get tricky, so having a very precise and sharp scissor, as I mentioned before, is very important. You'll be a lot happier with the results. It can be tedious, but it is so worth it in the end. Once we get this guy cut out, we're ready to add detail to the back of him. So we're gonna flip him over and we're gonna get our fine tip pen and we're gonna trace over lines. We're also gonna be adding some coloration to this guy as well, matching what was there in the front. It's, it can be a bit tedious of a chore, but the results are excellent. Just requires a little patience. All the details and color is added. All that's left now is to bend him and put him in shape. So we use the tweezers here. You get a lot more control. You can use your fingers and tweezers together to get the nice folds and creases that you need. We're gonna be bending this guy's arm so that both his hands grasp the claymore. And then we're also gonna be uh, bending his feet and legs into place here as well. This just gives him that very 3D lifelike pose that we're looking for. Next, we're going to take a pre-painted wooden coin and we're going to glue the bottom of his feet and the hilt of the sword where we want his other hand to go, grasping it. We're going to use our tweezers again to help get a solid grasp on that sword and to help that glue stick. I recommend using tacky glue for this project. It works the best with paper. Once you get that set in, you can gently put the feet on the stand and use the tip of the tweezers to place the feet and get them fastened onto that token. After giving him several minutes to dry, you can finish posing him and uh, bending him where he needs to so he stands up straight and he is ready to go on the battlefield. And there you have it, everyone. The possibilities are endless. It's amazing what you can do with just a little bit of paper and some creativity. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see some other things, or if you guys have any requests, just let me know in the comments below. We'll catch you next time until we meet again.